Uh, hi, I'm Hamid Tahway. I'd like to uh, address some questions concerning the Occupy movement, its relation with the economic crisis all over the world, its relation with the, uh, so to speak, Arab Spring, and also its characteristics and its uh, uh, differences from the similar movements that we had in the past in the West and for that matter in all of the world. So those, I hope I can, I can cover those questions. First, what is Occupy movement? Why we have such a movement now? And uh, what is its differences with the uh, similar leftist movements that we had passed in the last few decades in the West? The first thing that you notice is that occupied movement is, as the uh, uh, the main slogans show shows you, uh, it's against the uh, one percent, and it's a very very uh, uh, meaningful slogan, and, and shows its characteristics. We had left this movement in the in the past with 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 goals like. Uh, 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 challenging the war, anti-war, being for peace, like the movement that we had in the 60s against the Vietnam War. We have left this movement for uh, anti, in, in the recent decades, anti-globalization uh, or uh, anti-pollution for the green movement, for example. We had a movement against World Bank, against uh, G G20 summits and so on and so forth. When you look at them, you see that all of them they want some some changes, some modifications, some reforms, if you like, in the uh, present system. A, a big difference uh, 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 between the Occupy movement and those sort of movements is that it doesn't have any specific demand, or if you like, its demand is uh, 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 changing fundamentally the status quo is against one percent. It doesn't want to change anything uh, as far as the one person is ruling. Economically, politically, socially, it's challenging uh, the, the power of one person. And that's why they have the slogan of all power to, to 99 percent. The second question is, okay, why we have such a movement now? Of course, it's directly related to the economic crisis, but it's, I think it's far beyond that. It's not only economic uh, crisis that, 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 that capitalism uh, has today. They have a, a, a political, social, ideological, uh, cultural, if you like, crisis. Uh, up to uh, three decades ago, four decades ago, up to the 70s in the uh, in 20th century, uh, uh, Capitalism has got a worldwide view. They have a, I, ideals that they could say all the people should live the way that we live in the West. Why? Because there were so many places, so many markets in the world that uh, 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 capitalism ha has to conquer. We had feudalism, we have semi feudal systems in countries like Iran, in all different uh, Asian countries in, in uh, Africa, in every third world, so to speak. So, so uh, capitalism has something to offer to those people. Being against backwardness, uh, uh, representing the uh, civilization in the West, uh, education, health, and of course, more important for capitalism, having new, new persons, new, uh, uh, new working force by uh, 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 liberating, so to speak, those societies. We had land reforms in countries like Iran in the 60s and, and in many other countries in the Third World that had a new, new punch of, uh, a new, new generation of people, hundreds of millions of people that could, they, they, they uh, joined the uh, uh, workforce of the world and, and capitalism could expand and as so far as as far as they could do that they would claim that you are representing a new civilization and it was new 
people who are, had a better condition of life under capitalism comparing with the feudalism, backward societies that they had uh, in, in the first uh, uh, half of 20th century. And even we had revolutions under the name of, uh, of, of, of communism in, in countries like China, in Southeast Asia, in Africa, in, in Middle East, with the name of socialism, Arabic socialism, African socialism, but all of them, in fact, they was their goal and their, uh, their social and historic task was, was changing the society from a backward feudal uh, society to a modern, new capitalist society. And they did that. A big example is China. Under the name of Maoism and Communism, what they did, they industrialized the whole society. Or even October Revolution, uh, historically what they did, practically what they did, they changed Russia from the, the most backward country in the Europe to the, to the uh, superpower. And, and in so many other countries that thing happened. So on, on that era, what capitalism could say, and it's uh, uh, socially, philosophically, academically, they represented modernism, what is called modernism. But from 70s, the late 60s, uh, that thing changed because there was no new market anymore in the world because capitalism expanded itself to everywhere there were no new work, workforce, and no new reform that they could do to make people live better and at the same time expand your, 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 your power and uh, your profit and, 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 and capitalism. So now modernism was not working anymore. So we have an era of postmodernism now. Uh, and postmodernism means that uh, we are no longer believing in any any universal ideal. Every culture has its own definition of happiness, or own definition of civilization, or, or, or its own definition of human being even, and human values. Why? Because uh, capital was everywhere, but, but, but in the East, we had no, no, nothing even comparable to to the, to the welfare or to the way that people lived in, in the West. Capitalism couldn't do that. And, and uh, so they, they had to deny the universal values of people on the name of postmodernism, multiculturalism, relativism, and so on and so forth. So we had postmodernism philosophically, and with postmodernism, of course, economically, capitalism was at the end. It was a dead end for them. They could, they could postpone the situation. They could go on for a few more decades because of the collapse of Soviet Union, because, because of the state capitalism collapsed in Soviet Union, so they could rise the banner of, of free market and go on for, for a few decades with that. And then we had, of course, uh, uh, is, uh, political Islam. We had the uh, September 11th. And after that, we had a new crusade, new fight with Islamic terrorism. But what they did, they just postponed the, the, that, that end, that, that, uh, 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 the end of capitalism in the world for a few more decades, until the collapse of, of Wall Street, of course. Then economically, those promises of postmodernism, of Friedmanism, of new market collapsed economically. And then we had the edge of revolution that Kissinger called it, uh, that it was the, uh, uh, our, our uh, Berlin Wall that collapsed with the collapse of Mubarak's, Mubarak regime in Egypt. In fact, Berlin Wall of uh, free market collapsed. So politically and economically, everybody sees in the world that that's the end of postmodernism. So, in a broader view, you can see that we had a few decades of liberalism, conservatism, modernism, from the French Revolution to the mid or 60s in the last century. And then we had an era of postmodernism, neoconservatism, neoliberalism for around 30, 40 years. 
And now we had an era of nobody knows what. Nobody has any definition. What's happening? Capitalism passed the era of modernism without being able to go back to return to modernism, of course. Keynes, Friedmanism's death, but Keynes is no answer anymore. You cannot go back to Keynes. You cannot go back to Adam Smith. And, and Friedmanism, obviously, is not working. So economically, there is no view. There is no, uh, no uh, uh, prospect, no perspective for capitalism. Uh, philosophically, uh, what after we don't have a post postmodernism anymore, it's not possible because economically there is no base for that. Because uh, objectively, physically, there is no base for that. So we have a social, political, cultural, philosophical, economical crisis of capitalism, and that's new. That's the difference between our. This crisis with the 30s, for example, or for, with any other crisis that we had before, they could survive those crises because they were new markets in the world. We have two world wars exactly for having new era, uh, having new, new, new markets, new countries. They made new nations. They made new, new labor market new market for the capital and new market for commodities and they expanded so they survived those crises but now you don't find even a village which is not under the influence of capitalism that's why capitalism has got a universal uh, 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 economical plan which is called austerity for everybody for everybody doesn't matter if you are from Africa, from Asia, from Western Europe, from North America, from South America. The cure is, so to speak, the cure for those, for your economy is, is uh, 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 austerity. And of course you understand it's very hard to, to represent that austerity measures as a reform as something that makes people live better. It's impossible because it's obviously the opposite of having a better life. Austerity meaning, meaning sacrifice. Expect and want less and work more if you can find a job. And it's not only in the West, it's in everywhere. And by everywhere I mean we have already a vast movement revolution against it is called Arab Spring. They tried to, to represent Arab Spring as a revolution against dictators for Western democracy. And they forgot that they were talking about those Islamic countries that they, they have no need for Western democracy. They have their own democracy. They have their own civilization. They forgot that because people of the Egypt show that no, we don't have our own values. We, we are fighting for universal values. We are fighting for freedom, for bread for human dignity. That was their, their main slogan. And that is exactly the slogan of, of, of people of the world everywhere. And that's why in Wisconsin, in USA, a few months after the start of revolution in Egypt, we have workers in the street of Wisconsin with the slogan of, uh, uh, of Occupy uh, our own uh, 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 Freedom Square in, in Wisconsin. And then we have occupied movement and had its own ideals from, from Arab Spring. Why is that? Because those revolutions in the East were not anymore revolution against feudals, revolution for having a better education, revolution for having a better uh, 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 health system, or, uh, or, or have pa going forward from pre-capital feudal societies to capitalist societies because they were already under capitalism. Hosni Mubarak in Egypt was a Western puppet and the whole system was capitalism. The same thing we had the revolution in Iran in 79. Already capitalism was in work and was 
full force working in society like Iran that we had that revolution in 79. The same in Egypt, the same in Tunisia, the same everywhere. So those revolutions, uh, of course they happened in the East, but they were not revolution for, for joining the West because the Western system was already established there. Those were crises of capital in Egypt. It was a crisis of, 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 a, 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 of a feudal dictator, as it was the case in China, for example, or in Vietnam, or in other revolution. Uh, puppet governments uh, 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 related to imperialism, and socially, inside the, that society, uh, based on the, on the landlords and feudals. Egypt revolution is not like that. Egypt was already following the, uh, the, 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 uh, the plan of uh, economical austerity and totally free market. And then we had a revolution and people were hungry. People had no sort of freedom, nothing. And they went for uh, that, that revolution had the slogan of freedom, but not parliamentarism. Parliament doesn't answer, is no answer, not in the West, not in the East, not even for people that are under dictators like Khomeini or like Khamenei or like, like Ben Aziz or like uh, Hosni Mubarak. People wanted to take part in their, 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 their political uh, destiny and their political life directly by their committees, by their, their uh, uh, assemblies in any neighborhood. And the same thing that Occupy movement, even in, in, in the method of, of, of protest, they are copying what happened in Egypt, what happened in Tunisia, what happened in the uh, uh, revolutionary Arab countries. So that's the relation between what is happening there in the Middle East and what's happening now in the East. And when you compare, I think what's happening with the, under the name of Occupy Movement is representing everybody. It's more advanced, not in the shape of revolution. Of course, here we didn't see any revolution. We don't have a revolution. And you cannot have a revolution like Egypt in, in the West. By definition, you cannot have that. But you have a movement which represents all of them in the sense that it says no to 1%. When that revolution happens in Egypt, of course, they had to say, no to Hosni Mubarak, because Hosni Mubarak representing one person in Egypt for three decades, four decades. Or no to Gaddafi, because Gaddafi for 40 years represented one, one person of Libya society. And the same thing in, in, in Syria now we have. And in, in, the, in, 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 the, in, 90, in 2009 in Iran, with uprising, uh, we had that revolution again against Again, Islamic Republic, because for 30 years they were representing the 1%. In the West, that slogan, the only form, the only meaningful slogan of uh, no to Mubarak and no to Khomeini and no to Gaddafi in the West is no to 1%. It's, it's, it's more, I mean, it's more universal and, 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 and uh, more meaningful in the terms of uh, the, the big gap between the poor and rich everywhere and more uh, uh, effective, I think, and more representative of the revolution in the Egypt even because it, it doesn't add this one dictator, it doesn't address just a, a, a government, it addresses a class which is in power, uh, meaning uh, uh, capitalists. One per Nobody knows exactly what 90% are. 90% are any group of society, workers, students, youth, uh, women, uh, everybody is in 99% and it is actually everybody. But nobody uh, hesitates to say that one person, that we know what that one person is, that one person are capitalists. It cannot be anybody else. Capitalists are in charge, in power, and everything happens according and for their own benefits. And, and that thing put a big question mark on, on parliamentarism, on democracy, on free market. With the collapse of Wall Street, I think free market died as, and with the, economically, 
And as Kissinger said, with the collapse of Mubarak regime, politically, free market died and showed that there is no way. They have no, no strategy. They have no view. They have no philosophy. They cannot explain what's going on and they cannot say what's going on in, in two years, in two years event. EU is under question. Nobody knows that we have an EU next year. Nobody knows what's happening in, in Greece in a few months, even in Italy, in Spain, in Ireland, in everywhere. The same way that the Egypt revolution is not finished yet. Nobody knows where that thing goes and nobody knows how to control it. The same way in the, in, in the West. So we have a worldwide movement. In the West is called Occupy Movement. In the East is called Revolutions Against Dictators or Arab Spring or whatever you want to call it. But the, the fact and the, 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 the truth is that all of them are the same movement, uh, which is a response of 99% of people of the world uh, to the uh, to the capitalism system that has no way out. It's at its end. So there are two ways to look at those systems. From the capitalist point of view, you need a new freedman. They need a new philosophy, a new post-postmodernism, uh, uh, if you like it, uh, and that sort of thing. And, and their problem is that Economically, objectively, uh, physically, that thing is not possible. There's no way that you can uh, uh, have a new theory to explain the world and show the way. And capitalism, without explaining what's going on, is dead. Because it's as important as their economic solution. You cannot, you cannot rule by uh, 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 austerity and your your police you cannot do that in the west at least you cannot do that and now in the east even you cannot do that and that's the end of police government that's the end of uh, of uh, 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 any any perspective of growth there is no way of growth with capitalism there is no future with capitalism everybody knows that and they even confess they, they say, we don't know where we are going. What's happening? Was it, was it the, uh, the, the, the uh, uh, financial section of the capitalists which is responsible? Was it the greed? Was it the Wall Street? What was it? They don't know. They actually don't know. And it means that the end of an era, the end of, of capitalism with all of its yeah, ideology and philosophy and, and, and social theories and economical theories and everywhere. And uh, an opposite of that we have, we have 90% of the people that there is all, the, they represent the future. Still maybe they don't know exactly where to go, but they exactly know what they don't want. And that's the most important thing. They are against the status quo everywhere. And, and, and we have revolutions, we have the Occupy movement and that movement is here to stay, I think, and, and expand and have deepened itself and more profoundly and more, more uh, 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 inclusive, including everybody in the world against that tiny 1% uh, to join that movement and, and challenge the, uh, the ruling class. That's what's happening in the world. And at the end, I want to refer to Iran, which we had uh, two revolutions in the last uh, few decades. First, we had the revolution of 79, which, which I think was the, was the first revolution in a capitalist society in the East. And in that sense, it was very different from even the October Revolution and Maoist Revolution in China. Because it was, it was not against feudalism, it was not against landlords, it was against uh, capitalism, as was represented by the Shah regime in the in, uh, 50s and 60s uh, and, and 70s in the, in the last century. And that revolution was the first revolution in the Third World 
which its aim was not reforming, having a better capitalism, having a better industry, but get rid of them. That was the meaning of the revolution. And of course, Islamists, supported by the West, could, could, could defeat that revolution, have that Islamic Republic as a result. But it doesn't change the fact that that revolution was against the whole system. Was, at that time, was against the 1% that was represented by the Shah. By the Shah of Iran for 30 years, it was the Shah of that 1%. And that was the Shah that who did the land reform under the supervision of the West, did the land reform and changed everything. And after land reform in Iran, after 15 years, uh, we had that 79 revolution in Iran. And then we had the uprising three years ago, in 2009, you had that uprising in Iran against people who were in the street for human dignity, for freedom, for bread, the same as people of Egypt. The revolution was defeated again, but again the fact remains that that was the, 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 the first, first front in the Arab uprising. And even activists in Egypt, in any other countries, said that what's happened in Iran in, 90, in 2009 uh, was very uh, 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 important for us because we had our ideas and we had our inspiration from what happened in Iran. And then in its turn, what happened in Egypt influenced the West, the Occupy movement in Spain, first of all, and then in the US, then in, in, in Italy, then in everywhere, Occupy movement has got its inspiration from Egypt in, in its turn. So that's the interconnect, the, the way that internally everything is connected in the world. Because capitalism has got a universal solution, so to speak, which is austerity, people of the world have a universal solution of themselves, which is everybody against one person. But thank you and have a good time.